Hello. Today is actually September the 14th. But the video that I'm going to be putting up after this introduction is the talk that I gave on September the 4th at the New Way. And I'm going to try to put it in the slot for September the 5th, the day that I didn't have a video up because of my computer crashing. In any case, when I got the video back uh, a few days ago, actually Sunday is, is when I got it back, I noticed it began <laughs> not at the beginning, but about nine minutes or so into the into my talk. It was about a 30-minute talk, and there's about 21 minutes or something like that on the video. So the whole introduction was gone, and even though there were a couple of other files, they could not be opened. So that's why I'm doing this introduction today, so that you can uh, have an idea of what I said. The meat of the message is still there, just simply the introduction is not. And as I always do, I thank the people that were there, including the group from the Mystics in Training class. There were, I think, ten people there from that Thursday morning group that I'm uh, a part of. Uh, on a regular basis, and two people, a man and his wife, drove all the way from Tampa to come and hear me speak, which I was very much appreciative of, especially in light of the fact that so many of the regular members at the New Way were off in Orlando at a, at a special conference that weekend. Uh, so they weren't there, but that uh, the extra people that came in to hear me uh, boosted the attendance, which I extremely appreciated. Anyway, the title was called Awakening Consciousness, a Global Phenomenon. And I began with quotations from Jesus of Nazareth, who said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's, of course, well known by everyone. This one is less well known, but the person we know very well, George Orwell, very famous writer, and he said, in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth becomes a revolutionary act. We've been living in a world of universal deceit, where truth has been at a premium. Awakening consciousness is changing all of that. More and more people like myself are being willing to stand up and tell the truth, despite those that don't like it. And the third quote that I used that day as an introduction is from Michael Elner. And I'm not sure who Michael is, and I said that that day too. But the quote is well known, and I've seen it quoted in numerous places. He said, just look at us. Everything is backwards. Everything is upside down. Doctors destroy health. Lawyers destroy justice. Universities destroy knowledge. Governments destroy freedom. The major media destroy information. And religions destroy spirituality. Those were the quotes that I used to introduce my talk that day. And now I hope to be able to connect that talk which again was about roughly eight or nine minutes into the talk. This only took four. Years ago, not even that many, I was beginning to realize some of those things. Now I'm absolutely convinced that every one of them is the truth. Every one of them. Maybe I should read them again, just so that you get it firmly in your mind. Doctors destroy health. That may come as a shock to you, but the entire medical industry is based on one thing. Profit. And, I don't mean the kind of profit that delivers words from God, <laughs> I'm talking about economic financial profit. If there's no profit in it, 
They don't do it. And guess what? There's no profit in health. Do you get the picture? So they put poison in vaccinations and mercury and other medications. And how many of you know about side effects? They're not side effects. They're another condition that's being created by the first medicine, so you'll have to take a second one. And my dad, before he died, had about 12 or 13 or 14 bottles of different medications that he was taking this medical cocktail every day of his life, all prescribed by modern medicine. He died at age 54. I'm not saying the doctors did a bad thing. I'm not saying anybody maliciously intends to do anything bad. But when profit is the motive, our eyes get clouded from reality of who we are. And we're unable to love because profit gets in the way of us loving one another. So that's the first little phrase. Lawyers destroy justice. Boy, do I know this one. <laughs> The greatest blessing that I've had in my life over the past okay, six plus years is getting hit with a lawsuit. Now, I didn't think that was true when it happened. And for a good number of years after it happened, I was still the victim. But ultimately, it gave me a sense of empowerment as I learned the law. And now, I know more than the lawyers do on some, in some areas, not in every area. They could talk circles around me in some areas, I'm sure. Anyway, everything is good on that front. I know who I am. Universities destroy knowledge. They teach you what they want you to know. They don't teach critical thinking. Of course, maybe that's something we have to learn by ourselves anyway. But they don't encourage critical thinking. They encourage you to spout back the answers that you've been provided that they want you to believe is the reality. Governments destroy freedom. That's turning around. I, prom I wrote at the end of 2011 that 20, or, uh, uh, yeah, 2010 uh, that 2011 would be a year of massive physical changes and when the U United States Supreme Court passed the unanimous decision on June 16th of this year in the case of Bond versus the United States all nine justices reaffirmed that the Constitution takes preeminence over all of the legislated ordinances, acts, treaties, and everything else. Nothing can overrule the Constitution. And they reaffirmed for you and for me, for everyone on this planet, whether you're a United States citizen or not, they reaffirmed our sovereignty by unanimous decision. That would not have happened last year. That's a shift, a massive shift in consciousness because the establishment has wanted us to be enslaved, or so it appears anyway. So our rights have been rolled back and rolled back and rolled back, and it's not one particular party or political affiliation that's done this, it's just systemic within the human population so that we would continue to forget who we are, except I really believe there's a higher purpose for it all. And I have this strange way of looking at things sometimes. I see good in what may otherwise appear not so hot. And so the, these plans to enslave us and create a new world order have actually been the very thing that is liberating us. Why? Because we're in a global awakening, an awakening of consciousness. We're remembering who we are. 
that we're not supposed to be enslaved by any government or institution or any corporation or any authority that's above God because there are no authorities above God. And from God, the people are the next authority. And we're waking up to that around the world. That's why there's all these revolts going on. And dictators are being overthrown. And governments are being challenged as they've never been challenged before. Why? Because the human race is waking up and remembering that we are sovereigns under God. That we have unalienable or unalienable rights that were granted to us by birth in our Creator. It's our birthright, folks. It's our birthright. And we're remembering that and beginning to step into our power as we've never stepped into our power before. It's happening all over the planet. It's happening in every religion, on every continent, in every nation. It's happening in corporations. It's happening everywhere. Because the, as the underworlds, Mayan calendar stuff, as the underworlds are opening, our unconscious content of our soul is being revealed. Consciousness is what we're aware of, but we're becoming aware of the unconsciousness, which as Carl Jung says, our job is not to imagine beings of light, but to make the unconscious conscious. That's the goal of the awakening. That's what it's all about. It's about taking those things that you don't know about yourself, the things you've been afraid of, the things that you put yourself down for, the things you've been ashamed of and afraid of in your own being, in your own life. You're bringing them up to a place that's able to transform them, and that place is the human heart. And the element of the human heart is love. And we're being able to love ourselves as we've never been able to do before, to forgive ourselves for our apparent shortcomings and our mistakes and our sins or whatever label you want to put on it. We're waking up to the fact that we are loved. And that is the foundation for every bit of the awakening that's occurring on this planet. The fact that we're remembering I am love. I am free. And when we remember that, it changes us and gives us the power to change the world around us. It's inevitable. Creation never flows from the outside. It always flows from the inside out. Always. It's never been any other way. We've created the exact world that corresponds to our own lethargy, our own ignorance, our own unwillingness to explore and to know ourselves. Everything is being shaken now. Why? So that we can look at ourselves with fresh eyes and see ourselves as we've maybe not been able or willing to do before. Compassionately, lovingly, and authoritatively we take back our authority. And we don't allow external forces to dictate who we are. Because gee, you are you. And I be I. <laughs> and that's true of everyone in this room. The major media destroy information. I gave up watching the news a long time ago. You know, I haven't had a television hooked up in my house since the early 90s. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't pay attention to what's going on. I probably know more things that are going on than the average person because I do pay attention. But I get my information from the only media that's somewhat free, and that's the internet. <laughs> it's funny because the people that created the internet, was that Al Gore? <laughs> 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 
uh, may have created it so that they could know what everybody's doing and it would be a good spy mechanism so that everybody would go on Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that and, and these agencies would know what everybody's up to. But just like every well-laid plan of our ego minds, <laughs> which by the way, governments are just a representation of our ego minds. They're a false authority appearing real. Having no power but pretending it does and being the bully. Just like your ego and my ego. That's the government and its role. It's the role it plays. It's the mirror that comes back to us and shows us who we are. It's exactly perfect. Exactly perfect. In every detail. It's exactly what it needs to be for this global awakening to take place. Exactly what needs to be. But the mainstream media is still maintaining the old line. But it's cracking. And the truth is starting to get out. I mean, like the New York Times and pretty much every other mainstream media just a couple of days ago talked about the United States of America suing the 10 largest banks in the country for billions of dollars after they handed out trillions of dollars to them. <laughs> they're going to make them give some of it back. But what it's showing us, look behind the headline. Look behind the headline. There's discomfort going on in the powers that were. And I say the powers that were because they're passing out of power. Because our egos are merging with our higher self. And the spiritual phenomenon is overruling the natural phenomenon that's taking that has been taking place all of our lives. And this is a most amazing and powerful thing that's happening because it's changing literally the foundation that we're walking on. It's a solid foundation that's eternal and infinite, that cannot be shaken. Did not the writer, which, which if you remember the book, I forget it right now in this moment, maybe Hebrews, but I will shake everything that can be shaken, that, that which cannot be shaken will remain. That's a biblical quote, and I forgot the address. I didn't memorize addresses very much, but I memorized significant words. And this is what's happening in this time of the awakening of consciousness, that everything in your life and in our life collectively that is not built on a foundation of love and is not built on a foundation of truth and is not built on a foundation of freedom, every th all of that, Every bit of it, whether it's personal or collective, is being shaken down. The hit men are here. And they're here to knock down and be a, an iconoclast of every idol that we've built up that has stood between us and being our authentic self. Just like the mystics and training book that we're studying teaches. And the big one, religion destroys spirituality. I'd like to think that we are moving from religion to spirituality here at the New Way, mystics and training, and that's happening all over. It's happening in Muslim communities, it's happening in Hindu communities and Buddhist communities, and even the nation of Israel and the Jews there are waking up everywhere there's an awakening going on as people have this sense of change that's imminent that's upon us that's within us that's around us that's everywhere we look everything that we feel we feel the changes coming and we have a choice when these changes come and when we sense these things we can withdraw and close ourselves up. And then the things that we fear become even more fearful. The things that hurt become even more painful. The discomfort gets so uncomfortable that we could scream. Why? Is that a bad thing? 
Sue's been teaching us the last several weeks. This is good. This is good. We're being shaken out of our false self so that we can step into the beautiful self every one of us is. So that we can release that divine inner child that's been crying for love our entire lives. Hear me. See me. Look at me. I hurt. Are you willing to love me? That's your inner child. That's my inner child. And we're all pregnant with that divine being. We're all pregnant. And it has nothing to do with being a man or a woman. It has to do with being human. It has to do with being a sentient being. Because no matter how much darkness has been piled upon our situation, no matter how much pain and suffering we've had in our lives, you can't put out that eternal flame that burns in our hearts. Because that is the spiritual truth. That is the reality of who we are. That is the dynamism that transforms everything from darkness to light. From fear to love. And this is what's going on in this awakening of human consciousness. And it's happening everywhere. As I look into the future, as that little fairy that sits on my right shoulder shows me what's happening, what do I see? I see celebrations all over the world as people are dancing and creative and loving and hugging and expressing themselves as we've never been able to express ourselves before because we've been too afraid. Because it's not acceptable to be real or so we lied to ourselves. Do you see why the world around us lies? Because we've all lied to ourselves, every one of us. There's no escaping that. There's no getting away from it. That's the, that's the foundational truth. When you lie to yourself, you create a world of lies. That's why. Just look at us. Everything is backwards. Everything is upside down. Why? Because that's how we've been living our lives. But don't beat yourself up for that. Congratulate yourself for God's sake. You did what was absolutely impossible. You created the illusion that you could be separate from God. And you bought into your own lie and convinced yourself that God didn't love you or that you were unlovable for some reason and you laid a trip on yourself. Haven't we done that to ourselves? I've done it to myself. Now we're waking up and we're smelling the roses. We're smelling the coffee and I don't like that smell, Dave. <laughs> coffee, that is. <laughs> the awakening is the most newsworthy thing that's happening on this planet right now. The mainstream media isn't covering it. The politicians, for the most part, aren't talking about it, save a couple. But it's happening all over the world, and it's unstoppable. We're creating the new heaven and the new earth. And it's coming to us from our own hearts, from our own soul, from the center of our own being. And it is your life and mine that are being transformed, that are in turn transforming the world itself. I see a beautiful future for humanity. Despite everything that seems to be falling apart, personally in people's lives and collectively in the global community, I see from the ashes of Phoenix arising. I see a culture that has no beginning and no end, that we finally create the world where love is not only acceptable, it's the only way because the old ways will have been forgotten and the tears will be wiped from our eyes. Can you see the vision that I see? Can you see the world that I'm describing? We don't have to live in straitjackets anymore and accept someone else's authority over us. If we take responsibility for our own lives and live from our heart, it's impossible to do wrong to anyone. It's impossible to hurt someone with any intention of hurting them. 
when you're coming from your heart. And that's the world we're moving into. And I invite you to lay aside to the best of your ability all the doubts and fears that get in the way of you being you. Because the gift you have to give to the world is being your unique self as only you can be. That's the calling of God on your life and mine. And we're hearing the call and responding. Thank you for letting me share with you this morning.